Hello everyone, my name is Anil and you are watching Education Tattwa. Today we are going to talk about very very important concept in database that is database function. When we talk about database function, these are majorly into two categories. One, which is system defined, which means already part of the package and second can be user defined. So when we do system defined functions, there could be multiple other kind of functions as simple as getting a system date. So if we get a system date, 12 is a table just to execute any function or things like that. You can run this and as you can see that you should be able to retrieve today's date. That's a very simple example of a function. Function could be of multiple types. So this is the link I'm going to put it on uh, the description as well. There are different functions based on the data types like numeric functions, character functions, analyst character functions and so on and so forth. There are date time functions which are very useful for uh, when you are dealing with dates. Conversion functions, especially to care and to date, these are widely used and some large object functions and so on and so forth. So today what we are going to talk about and cover basically the aggregate functions which are very useful for reporting and this will also help us to talk about some of other concepts like group by having and all those things. Then there are analytical functions as well. So this, this is a quite good comprehensive document that I found over the internet and I'm going to paste it in the description go and have a look at, uh, on this a little lead. So today what we are going to talk about we are going to talk about system function as well as we will create user defined function as well. So when we talk about system function or before that what are the function all about right. So function is a block of code which expect some input this could be optional as well which expects input it performs certain operations and then finally it results in output this input and output could be in the form of as simple as integer string or date or could be complex like table and all if the function is successfully uh, compiled it will be in a valid state otherwise it will be in invalid state it is a pre-compiled form of plsql code which means it's faster in execution it is already available so it's uh, also provide you some sort of abstraction of the data underlying data and it's very quick to integrate with any programming unit which means from any plsql code you can call this function if the access is there and I have already also put this link in the Jamboard so you can um, reference this later. Let's have a look and create, execute some of the aggregate functions. What are the aggregate functions? Aggregate functions when you want to do the sum, count, average, things like that. Basically when you want to aggregate number of line items, aggregate functions are in use. So escort.amp is a table that consists of employee name. Let me show you how the structure looks like. So this is the structure of employee table which we saw earlier as well in this tutorial and it will have employee name, name, uh, job, manager and uh, things like that. Now if I want to know how many employees there in this table I can simply go and run this query on count. So you will notice this count is the function and we pass input parameter on which column we want to do. Asterisk, it means it will take all your columns and do row wise count but there is efficient way of handling this count so as you know number of columns we can count on number of columns or we can even count on single column so if we do one it represent that one with respect to each row will be counted and total number of count will be similar if you do the count asterisk this is little efficient than using a strict and the output does not change now if we want to take the sum of salary of employee table i can take that this is the total salary that we are paying it is very useful for calculating the payroll and things like that then if i want to understand what is the average salary of my department i should be able to use the average function i can then here comes the other functions which we talked about. We can uh, sub 
uh, we, we can convert this into integer or with float with certain decimals so that's all control that we have here then we should be able to take the maximum salary of employee so which is 5000 we can also check the minimum salary which is 800 and average we already talked about now there is an important concept of group by if we want to check how many employees we have in each department so basically we are doing the grouping based on department in such scenario we should be able to run query like select count we want to count number of employees we also want to have department number against that count and we want to group that with department number if we run this query now this will give us a result that in department 30 we have six count in department 10 we have three count we can also use having along with the group by so if we say having count of employee number should be greater than three so it's kind of providing a where clause on this group by grouped by data so as you can see that i can use group by and having and this is a very common question asked in the interview how to use group by and having and what is their relevance so this is one good example of using group by with having now let's have a look and let's create a user defined function so what i just want to do i want to create a function where i will pass employee number as an input i want this function to calculate the salary against this employee and give me output as a salary and this is a very simple function but while we want to talk about this function user defined function i just want to give you an overview how the functions can be created so if you look at this function example the structure is create or replace so if there is already a function created with the name get salary this will override that function basically it will replace the function and get salary is the function name whenever you are passing a parameter it's good uh, nomenclature that you always use p underscore as a parameter so that you can differentiate uh, i have written thousands line of PLSQL code and this is very useful to follow the clean coding practice it's very important then what kind of input parameter it should have then what should be the written parameter so i talked about there should be input parameter output this is optional you can keep this blank as well whereas in return you definitely should have some value so i am returning number here for local variable i have a i, I use l underscore just to represent it's a local variable and for parameter it is uh, p underscore then if you just notice that uh, this is begin of your PLSQL statement and this is the end of it and at the end you can mention if this program throws an error how to handle that so you can use uh, you can this is a way of using exceptional exception handling in java it is try catch in other programming language it's a different way of handling these exception in plsql you can simply mention exception when others exception when no data found or things like that and here is the core logic of our application what we are saying in this uh, function i want to get the salary into this variable from this particular table where employee number equals to employee number passed in as a parameter when this query will execute it will set this data into l underscore cell variable and it will return it in case of any issues it will go on to the exception statement and work accordingly so let's compile this package you will notice that i've talked about compile not run because this is pre-compiled statement and it's stored so that's where it is also called uh, stored procedure of functions now if i want to execute this function what i can do i can write sql query where i will pass employee number 7839 and if i will run if i will run this this will return me the salary as 5000 which is 
the salary for this particular employee number so this is very simple example of how to use the function and a differentiation between system defined versus user defined function now what you can do you can go and create function of your own in case of any difficulty let me know in the comment section and let me know where you find this useful and how you're gonna implement it in your project thanks for watching